This is a short video from Gail that shows you the basics of using the Desmos graphing calculator. A graphing calculator is a powerful learning tool. You can generate lots of graphs very quickly and see the patterns and effects of manipulating aspects of functions. You can learn more quickly, you can deepen your understanding and you be can become a much better mathematician. All this in less time. There is a Desmos app for phones and tablets, which you can also use. This video specifically deals with the desktop application that runs in your browser. That is Google, Chrome or Safari or whatever browser you are using. There's also a PDF document which summarizes this video. You get to Desmos either by opening the link that you've been given or you can open your browser and type in desmos.com forward slash calculator in the URL bar, which is over here. Once you've done this, the Desmos interface will open as shown over here. The first thing that you should do to make Desmos work for you is to change the settings. You do this by accessing the Tools button in the upper right corner. The tool settings depend on what your purpose is, what aspect of functions you are studying, what functions you're studying, what grade you are in. We are focusing specifically on trig graphs for grade 10. When you click this button, the Tools menu pops up. I'm going to show you what your settings should be. This is an enlargement of the tools menu. <clears throat> the first thing that you change is the domain that you're working in. That's the possible X values. The lower, at the lower end, you must have minus 90. And at the upper end, you must have 360. The step size is 30. That means the angles will be marked at every 30 degrees. On the y-axis, you are changing the range of your function. And at the lower end, you've got negative 4. And up at the upper end, you have got 4. Because we're working with trig functions, we're going to have a very small step of 0.1. Notice you have to use the decimal point and not comma. And then lastly, you must select degrees, not radians. Once you have clicked the Tools button again to make the Tools menu disappear, your interface should look like the interface shown over here. If it doesn't, go back and change your settings again. This is where you are going to type the functions that you are graphing. So here we go with graphing our first function. In the function space, you type y is equal to sine x. That means we are drawing the graph of y equal to sine x from negative 90 degrees to 360 degrees. Immediately, the graph of y equal to sine x appears. If you look at this graph, you'll see that it bears out everything you know about the sine x graph, the sine x function. It goes through the origin, it increases and turns at 90 degrees and 1, decreases, goes through the x-axis at 180 degrees, turns again at 270 degrees minus 1, and then increases until 360 degrees. It has an amplitude of 1 and a period of 360 degrees. Click in the white space immediately below where you've typed in your function and you will be able to type in another function. For your second function, you should type in y is equal to a sine bx. Once you have done that, don't press enter. You will notice that this add slider option appears. For now, just click all. You'll understand these sliders in a minute. 
To change the lowest and highest value of that a slider can have, you click on the number on the scale, as I'm showing here. So you would click on that negative 4 and that negative 3. Clicking here will change the boundaries of the A slider. Clicking here will change the boundaries of the B slider. Change the A slider setting so that the lowest number A can be is negative 4 and the highest number it can be is 4. And we're going to choose a step size of 0 0.5 decimal point so that A will always go up in halves. The B slider should have a lower limit of negative 3, an upper limit of 3, and once again the step size is 0 0.5. The next step is to experiment with how these sliders work. You can change the slider value by sliding this button backwards and forwards. It will go up to 4 and down to negative 4, going up in steps of a half. The B slider, if you drag the button of the B slider, it will go up to 3 and down to negative 3. As you drag the sliders back and forth, you'll notice the graph in this panel changing. We're going to look at the specific example that is here. So in this example, remember the function is y, it, y is equal to a sine bx. The a slider is set to 3.5 and the b slider is set to 1. That means that we've drawn the graph of y is equal to 3.5 sine 1x. But we don't write that one. So it's y is equal to 3.5 sine x. The blue graph and the graph color is given by this block over here. The blue graph is the graph of y is equal to 3.5 sine x. We know from our previous investigation that this should be a graph with a period of 360 because we haven't changed the period, but we've changed the amplitude to 3.5. And there you can see it goes up to 3.5 and down to negative 3.5. In this example over here, in the function y is equal to a sine bx, the a slider is set to 1 and the b slider is set to 3. So this is the function y is equal to sine of 3x. We know that we have manipulated the period of y is equal to sine x. y is equal to sine x has a period of 360 degrees y equal to sine 3x will have a period of 360 divided by 3, which is 120 degrees. On your graph, you can see that the graph, the function completes an entire period or wave in 120 degrees. And there's the next one, another 120 degrees. You will also notice that the amplitude is 1. It is still 1, the same as the y equal to sine x function. Here both sliders have been set to 2. We have the function y is equal to 2 sine 2x. We would expect an amplitude of 2 and a period of 360 divided by 2, 180 degrees. Checking the graph, it's the blue graph. The amplitude is 2. The turning point is 2 units away from the midline, which is the x-axis. And the period is 180 degrees. There is a complete wave, and that is 180 degrees. And then we start the next wave. 
Sometimes you have a whole bunch of graphs on your screen at the same time. You can, of course, clear them and get rid of them by clicking the X here. You can also hide them because you might want to see them again later. If you click the icon next to the function, the graph will disappear. And you'll notice that icon's not colored anymore. Click the icon again and the graph of y equal to sine x will reappear. If you want to change the color or the line style of your graph, then you must click and hold the icon and then your color and style option tab appears. Those are the basic skills that you need to investigate the graphs of trig functions.